What it be y'all once again, Resident 47 back in effect for another video. This is gonna be part 12 of my music collection series. Last video I did was like two weeks ago, so this is pretty overdue. And I got, let's see here, five new CDs and one new cassette to show off. And like I always do, I start off with the cassettes first and only got one. And this is an album that's never been on cassette officially, but I found someone made a custom of it and there was only one made and I bought it fucking immediately. This album should be pressed on cassette officially for everyone, but I have one here and it's a Jedi Mind Tricks Vinyl by Design cassette. Now, like I said, this is custom made. I'll have a link in the description to the person who made this because this person made a bunch of other class underground hip hop albums on cassette and this is one of one, right here, so, this is the, uh, slipcase right here, and then here's the actual tape itself, that is official as fuck looking right there, check that out, same exact colors as, like, the, the 2004, like, reissue, and then it comes with the, like, a smoked out black set, it's showing off more clear on the screen, but it's a little more tinted when you hold it. I'm holding it like right in front of me. And then I get this thing, uh, this also came with like a two stickers. Got this pick right here from like the Vinyl by Design era. And then, uh, this fan art right here. And then this also came with like an actual J card. So here, another pick from the, that era. And then you got that, um, I forgot where this pick is from, but it's in the, it's like the gatefold and like the digipack for the CD. And then, you got the, uh, original trackless picture right there. I'm so happy to have this, like, no one's ever, like, this has never been made on cassette officially, but, not only is this, like, the only cassette in existence, this is so fucking well done, it looks like Get On Down made it. So, I'll have the link in the description to the one who made this, and it's been about, like, a year since I talked about this album, because I talked about it on my first music collection. But, um, talk about some of my favorite tracks in here. You got Retaliation, um, well, Speech Cobras, I Guess Die, of course, The Exertions Remix, um, I got the B side, Heavenly Divine, that makes me want to fucking destroy someone. Uh, Sacrifice the Deer Hunter, I love that. Um, Blood Rain, B.A. Baracus destroyed that. Uh, Trinity with fucking Lewis Logic. The Executioner's Dream. Just a Law's verse on that might be my top five verses of all time. That shit is devastating. And then you got, uh, Army of the Pharaoh's War Ensemble. That's probably in my top three hip-hop songs of all time. I love that. I'll have to do a full review on this album one day because... It's my third favorite album of all time, and it's my second favorite hip-hop album of all time, so... Jedi My Tricks, Found by Design, on cassette. So happy to have this one of my top fucking prized possessions. Alright. Now, onto the CDs. You know, I've been starting out these CD collections with the same related artists. I think this is the last time it's gonna be, because... I think as far as this artist goes, I got everything in my collection that I want now. So... We got four to go through with these with this artist, and first up, it's gonna be Mary Timoney's solo debut album *Mountains*. Came out in 2000. It just celebrated its anniversary like last month, early March. I got all four of her solo albums now. This is her debut, like I said. Some gets just, like crucified by the media, but this is a fucking banger album, I think. Uh, let's see right here. She went like really experimental here compared to like everything she did with Helium. This is a way different. It's a lot more like piano based, a lot more like laid back. And uh, yeah, I, like the track was like wrapped around like this, so I gotta read it like that. But you get a Dungeon Dance, Poison Moon. Oh, that's my favorite track on the album. I Fire Myself, The Hourglass, the vocals on that. 13Bs, which, um, 
was a song on No Guitars EP. She like read it on piano and wrote lyrics to it. Uh, what else on here? Value of a Thousand Perfumes classic. Uh, and Illusion is just like an interlude. I love that though. And uh, yeah, great, great fucking album. One of my favorites from 2000. I'll review all of her solo albums like once her new solo albums rollout starts coming around. I'll review all of her original solo albums from the 2000s. <clears throat> So this is her debut album, Mountains, right here. And then, two years later, she put out her second solo LP in 2002. So they go on Dove. This is like the darkest shit she's ever done in her career because around this time, on like 2001, 2002, her and Ash Bowie, you know, they were like a couples thing in Helium. They broke up like around this time and... Mary just fucking eviscerates herself and Ash, like, across this entire album. And it's, like, depressing as fuck to listen to. But, man, some of the best... This is, like, some of the best songs she's ever made in her career are on here. Like, Look at Ghost in the Eye. That's my favorite song she's ever done there, like, on her solo catalog. I love that. Blood Tree, he... She fucking destroys Ash on that song. Dr. Cat is fucking amazing. That video... Ugh, the fucking pianos and the way she sings on that fuck out of here. What's on here? Um, that was Escape, Fourteen of Horses, Magic Power, uh, The White Room, Dryad and the Mule. There's also like some uh, there's also like some like Greek mythology and like religious shit in here, but it's not like preachy. It's like pretty well done. So. This is their second album, The Golden Dove. The production is still more laid back, but still dark. Real dark right on this album. So, that's her second record, The Golden Dove 2002. And then, 2005, she goes back to Washington, D.C. And fucking makes a masterpiece, I think this is, right here. X-Hex. This is like a full-on rock album right here. No experimental shit. Full rock. Uh, this is actually like a dual album. It's Mary on guitar and vocals, and then a friend of hers named Devin Ocampo on drums. So, this is a full-on rock album, like I said. Back to basics here. And I think this is her best record since The Magic City at the time. And this came out on, um, Lookout Records, which is known for, like, dropping, like, Green Day's, like, uh, first two albums, like, Kerplunk and all that. And, um... Matador put out Mountains and Golden Dove, and then she got dropped on the label after that, which is fucking crazy. But, uh, she dropped her best solo on right here, man. You get On the Floor, Fuck My Life, is that relatable? Friend of JC, I love that, that last verse she does on that song. In the Grass, I fucking love that song, In the Grass. It's probably my favorite on the album. Return to Pirates, Hard Times Are Hard, the fucking drums of that are brutal. Nine Times Three... Wow, or Worms of Wisdom, uh, Moon, Backwards, Forwards, fucking classic album, I would say, if you wanna, I will say this is where you start off, as far as your solo catalog, so, XX, 2005, and yes, this is the album that gave her new band its name, so, her third record, from 2005, and then her last solo album, up until this year, in 2007, is The Shapes We Make. This is under the pseudonym of the Mary Timoney Band. It's the same lineup as X-Hex, it's her and Devin. Just a different name. And I gotta admit, this shit is... This shit fucking fell right on its fucking face, in my opinion. I do not like this album at all. It came out under, um... It came out under uh, Kill Rock Stars, which is a Bikini Kills label. And you think that with that, this would be a fire album, but no, it's fucking way boring. It's... Crazy boring. Very fucking uninspired compared to Excess, which just destroys my logic and reasoning. I don't know how she made such a bad album compared to like that fucking classic within two years. But um, the one thing I can give it is uh, was it the song Sharpshooter? That was pretty cool. But uh, nothing really else to say about this album though. It's not really inspired. And uh, this album is pretty hard to get. Compared to all the other salams, this one's out of print. But, uh, not for the worst, though. So, uh, if you can't get this for a good price, pick it up. 
uh, just complete your solo collection like I did. So those are four solo albums. And I got to say, her new solo album coming out this year is my most anticipated record of 2023. Like, definitely. And then this I picked up, like, last Saturday, just going around, just shopping around different record stores. And I came across this at the holy grail of mom and pop shops vintage stock. And it's Green Day's uh, Shenanigans 2002. This is a B-Sides album from like, it's like a compilation of B-Sides and outtakes from all of their studio albums up to this time, 2002. You got right here, and like on the booklet, I'll show it off real quick. It's, you got the booklet right here, and it's basically like a mashup of like a bunch of different pictures from all the different eras of the band, like... You get like uh, Dookie, Insomniac, Nimrod, and all that. Sing of that, I need to get Nimrod in my collection. I fucking love that album. So, put us back on here. And, uh, see what my favorites on here are. Uh, Suffocate, Desensitize. I think those two songs are like from like the 1039 Smooth Kerplunk era. Uh, Don't Wanna Fall in Love, I love that song. That was supposed to be on Dookie. Fucking great song. Uh, I, I Want to Be on TV, that was uh, come from Insomniac, that's a great song. Scumbag, I think that was going to be on Nimrod. Uh, uh, what else on here? Ha Ha, You're Dead, I think that was... I think that was like a new song they made. Yeah, I think that was a new song they did for this album. Uh, Rotting is dope. Tired of... Uh, I think Tired Wave for you is a cover, I don't really think I was feeling that one. But, um, Sick of Me... Yeah, pretty dope songs on this album right here. I can see why these were cut, but there's some pretty good songs to behold. Like like I said, Don't Wanna Fall In Love, that's my, my favorite. I Wanna Be On TV from my favorite Green Day album, Insomniac. So yeah, Shenanigans, nice B-Sides album from 2002. And now I'm going to be going into some albums that I was just like bumping recently. So first up, I was bumping this like, like literally yesterday. This album turns 20 later this year, like in July. I think this album embodies the spirit of this specific uh, music crowd's era. And it's Bon J's Wizard of the Hood, came out in 2003. And what I was saying is, this album right here perfectly like encapsulates like the Juggalo spirit of like 2003. Like the Raining Diamonds era, this is that in a nutshell. Based off of the song, you know, from Carnival of Carnage, which is based on The Wizard of Oz. And you got like, the yellow brick alleyway right, right there. And I love the green jewel case for this. I've never seen that on any other album. But uh, classic album or EP. I, I, would, I would say it's an album. Fuck that. But you get a Let It Rain, Homies to Smoke With. Oh, and by the way, um, I gotta explain something. So it's an adaptation to Wizard of Oz, like I said. And you got different members of Psychopathic taking on different characters from the movie. Like um, that Scarecrow right here is Monoxide. And then the Tin Man is uh, Jamie Madrox. And then the Lion is Blazy Dead Homie. And then the the Wizard is Shaggy Too Dope. So and Homies are Smoke With. That's where Jamie meets up with Monoxide. Fuck like Wildin', that's where he meets up. Where, that's where they meet up with uh, Madrox. Hoy Be Horrifying, that's when they meet up with Blaze. And then like, which is the, the, like, the last two tracks are like, on the way to the palace. And uh, my favorite song here would be like, uh, Let It Rain, that's a classic. Fuck Wildin, I love the chorus Madrox does on that. Uh, what you thinking about? Shiny Diamonds is my favorite track on the whole fucking album. Um, that just makes me, that just puts me in a great mood. And then uh, something with, same thing with the Wizard Palace. What a way to fucking end the album. And then there's two bonus tracks in here, which are uh, Axis Swinging and Multiple on Myself. Multiple on Myself is pretty dope because he's like, he uses like different human emotions as like personality disorders, which is fucking really clever. Like, Von J is one of the most, like, creative musicians in fucking music history. Yes, I fucking said it. And then, there are two versions of this album. This is the standard version, and then there's a different one that comes in a tin. And it comes with, like, like uh, blunt rolling papers. And it's got two different bonus tracks, which are um, Bloody Bitch Dead and My Shine. I prefer both of those over the bonus tracks in here, like, especially My Shine. That's a dope fucking song. But, um... Y'all know this. If y'all jugglers, you know that what this is. The gathering performance of this, the greatest gathering performance of all time. One of my favorite live performances from like any musician ever. So this turns twenty three. 
um, this year. If there's a demand for it, I might review it. I'm going to be, uh, be reviewing Green Book uh, later this year, definitely. So, uh, if y'all request it, I'll hit this up. So, we're 50 minutes into this. I'm going to have to speed this up. Next up, I was bumping this like a... Uh, like yesterday, like that's yesterday. I was pumping this and Wizard of the Hood yesterday. It's my favorite album by this band, one of my favorite bands of all time. Deftones, White Pony, 2000. This is the uh, white cover, so it's the reissue. The OG is the gray one with the pony just like in the corner right here. But um, this is the one that has Back to School Mini Maggot on it. Which I think is a dope song, I don't give a fuck. And then this right here, this is what the original cover looks like. Pop this off right here. Nothing to show off, it's just white blink background. But um, like I said, it's my favorite. I think this is um the most I'll say around the first and most cohesive, but this is just their best as like this is their best statement as musicians. And uh what you got on here? Back to school, like I said. Fight it shared. I have no idea how to fucking pronounce that, but you probably know what song I'm trying to talk about. Digital Bath, I love that song. Elite Heavy as fuck. Um, Teenager, I love Teenager. That was supposed to be on um, the Team Sleep album. And you can definitely tell, like, it's got that dirty, like, this analog fucking sound to it. Knife Party. Korea, Korea is fucking devastating. I love that song. The guitars on that. Chino screaming, fuck my life. But then you got a uh, Passenger with, um... Mayor James Keenan from Tool, they're going back and forth on that, and I gotta say this. Mayor James Keenan is the goat of, like, rock collabs, like, you got Passenger with Mayor James Keenan on here, you got, um, you got Head Up with Mass Cavalera from Sepultura on Around the Fur, and get this, speak of the devil, on Team Sleep, you got King Diamond with Mary Timoney, yes, she's on that album, and she's got her own solo track, Tomb of Lygia. Those songs are fucking devastating. I love that. So, salute to Chino for recruiting her for that one. But then, uh, you get the iconic change in the House of Flies. You know, that's real big with my generation, which is surprising. I'm happy to see that the babies are getting familiar with this band. And then, uh, it ends with, uh, Peak Maggot, which is the full, full length version. But, um, their best right here. I gotta get around the front of my collection. Bally, I fucking love that album. Uh, it's probably my go to, like that and Adrenaline, but this is the best still. Deftones White Pony 2000. Next up, I haven't heard of this album right here in years. But I revisited like a few nights ago. And it's doper than I remembered. This is a great fucking record right here. Nas I Am, 1999. This is the third album. You know, most people when they talk about Nas, all they talk about is Illmatic, Illmatic, Illmatic. And then like I got like, a Blue Moon, they'll talk about It Was Written. But they'll never talk about like this. Or Stillmatic, or none of that, which is fucking stupid, because this is so good right here. Like, you know, everybody knows the story. This was supposed to be a double disc album, but it got fucking uh, leaked, and Columbia just wanted to put it out, just put them out, like, separate, like, you know, like, um, like, Bizarre Bizarre, and, like, fucking, um, Use Your Illusions were done, like, but he just wanted to make another album, which was Nostradamus. And then you can see the ad right there. Uh, Nostradamus, the album, October 26, 1999. But yeah. Yes, the double disc original is better, but the retail is fucking dope too. You get a uh, Nurse State of Mind Part 2, which I, by this point I prefer over Part 1. And you know, hip-hop backpackers might fucking nail me to a cross for saying that, but uh, it's, it's, it's honest. Uh, Small Roll, that fucking beat is so good. Uh, favorite for a favorite was Scarface. The little Survivor is talking to like Big and Pac. She's talking to them from like Beyond the Grave. Uh, Get Up Prisoners. I Wanna Talk to You. Life of What You Make It with DMX. That's one of my favorite DMX verses right there. Uh, Nas is Like. Undying Love. One of, one of Nas' best storytelling songs ever. Like, and when you listen to the bootleg, it goes perfectly. It's like, the way it was done, like, on the bootleg is so fucking dope because, like, he kills himself at the end of this song. And then in the intro to the second disc, it's like he's talking to God and shit, which is fucking crazy. So, Nas I Am, dope album right here, great record. 
Go sleep on this. Check it out if you haven't heard it in a while. And uh, Danny Hastings, he did this card right here, which is like um, this is like a Nas supposed to be like King Tut or some shit like that. So that's pretty cool. And then uh, two more to go right here. Second to last right here. Um, I'm just gonna show it off. I can show it off. Vaughn by Design Mountains two classics from 2000. And this is like another 2000s icon right here. More so than those, arguably. Ghostface Killer Supreme Clientele. And there's no arguably about it. This is the most iconic album of 2000. This is his highly anticipated follow-up to Iron Man. This is the best fucking album the Wu-Tang put out after Wu-Tang Forever. Nothing else has touched it since. Most people prefer... A lot of people prefer this over Iron Man, which... No argument from me on that. It's his best album lyrically. The production is like as soulful as a fucking hip-hop album is ever gonna get. And then this is the OG that's got that dope-ass glitter case. Um, I need. I want to pick up another copy of this because my... You guys, you can see my com copy is completely fucking ravaged. But, um... Yeah, man. What, what needs to be said about this that hasn't been said already? You get a, a Nutmeg with RZA. One. Saturday Night. Ghostini. I prefer the OG that's on the Canadian version. It's the same beat that's like on... The oh, Wu-Tang Killer Bees the Swarm album. That Ruthless Bastard song. Uses that same beat as uh, on the Canadian version of Ghostini. But this is way better. And then, uh... Apollo Kills with Raekwon. Buck 50 with Method Man and Red Man, and I think... I think either Raekwon or Capadonna is on there as well. I might be wrong on that. But, uh, you get Mighty Healthy. We made it. Um, Stroke of Death. I do like Stroke of Death. It's a, it's a, it's a pretty good song. And then, uh, you get Malcolm. That's one of the dopest beats on the album. Like, Ghost talks about how he broke Mason's jaw on that song. Uh, Child's Play, that's a great song. Except Child like Ghost, of course. Wu Bang a 101, which has like Jizza, Massacilla, Raekwon, Capadonna. One of the best Wu, like, Wu fucking posse cuts right there. So, yeah, what needs to be said about this, man? Ghostface Kill Supreme Clientele, Face Melting, Masterpiece, no exceptions. And then, last but not least, uh, I think I bumped this like a few months ago, but, uh, this album right here, this album needs to get a lot of respect nowadays because without this, nothing in this current underground hip hop scene would fucking be in existence. Rock Marciano, Marsburg, 2010. This is his debut album. I know he did like a UN album in 2004, but this is his official debut to me. Yeah, this is the uh, 2020 reissue that Fat Beats did for his 20th anniversary, where it's like the deluxe cover. I wish this. I wish they would have stuck with the OG one, where it's just like you know you got all like all this fire and lightning burning down in like Hempstead, Long Island. The original one is just him chilling on like the rooftop, which is like a cloudy sky. I wish it was just that instead, but this is still kind of cool. And then, uh, this inside right there, nothing to write home about. There's nothing, there's like nothing inside either. But, um, man, what's on here, man? It's a crime. Whatever, whatever. Raw deal, we do it. Snow. Right in around, that's my favorite track on here. Uh, Thug's Prayer. Pop. Jungle Fever. Marsburg. And then you got, like, um, you got like a snow remix with Sean Price, and you got Bozak. That's like an EPMD slang right there. So yeah, um, love this. You know, Rock Marciano, he's known for making his, you know, for, he's known for like his drumless beats and all that. This album has drums on like almost every fucking track. And it's my favorite Rock Marciano album. Um, Reload is like right there with it. I would have scooped up that reissue that came out in like 2021. The cover looks fucking butt ugly. It's like, it's not like a rip through it. Not good. But this, this is it. This is that album. Rock Marciano, Marsburg. Without this, there's no Griselda. There's no Rome Streets. There's no Recognize Ali. J. Royale, etc. This is where it all fucking started. So, that's my, uh, that's my music collection. Part 12. 10 CDs, one cassette. Um, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share the shit. Uh, I should be back with more content hopefully soon. And until then, I'm over and out of this bitch.